Hello, today I will show you how to download, verify, install, and use the Monero GUI wallet in simple mode. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do for a security measure is download this program on your computer called GTK Hash. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to verify your download and make sure that it is indeed what you think you're downloading. And to make sure that nobody has served you a file that was actually not the right file to be downloading, trying to steal your coins, trying to be malicious in some way, whatever it may be. Um, so what you're going to want to do to get that program is actually go to, the easiest way is to go to the Ubuntu software store and press the little search button up here and type in GTK and scroll down right here, GTK hash. All right, so once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and go to uh, getmonero.org. So we're gonna go to the downloads tab, gonna go to the GUI wallet tab, and then we're gonna press Linux 64-bit. Now, I've already downloaded this in preparation for this video, but uh, it's gonna take a second to download. I think it's around 150 megabytes at time of recording. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure it's here in our downloads. Here's my unconfirmed download. That's what I just started. But Monero GUI Linux, here we go. Right here in our downloads, this is what it should look like when it's finished. So what you're going to want to do is open GTK hash. You're going to go down to the bottom corner here, open this up. We're going to press file. We're going to go to downloads. And then we're going to press the Monero GUI Linux file that we just downloaded press open and then press hash. Now the only hash that we're worried about right now is the SHA-256 where we're going to go ahead and copy this and then we're going to verify this and how we're going to verify it is we're going to go to the back to this page press control F and then paste that hash in there and what do you know it matches right up with the Linux 64 bit hash on the website. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and go back to our downloads folder here and we can click on this, right click it and press extract here. All right. So now you want to click on this orange folder, right click on it and press move to desktop select. There you go. Now it's on your desktop. So we can close out of this now. We don't need that. Go ahead and open this folder that we just put on our desktop. And then, as you can see here, uh, there's a Monero wallet guide here that could help out if I may have missed anything or if you want to look at some more extra information. But we're going to go ahead and press on the Monero wallet app image. Double click that and it should open the wallet. Go ahead and pick your language and press continue. Since we're using simple mode, uh, we're going to go ahead and press that. Um, there is a bit of a risk using simple mode. You're going to be connecting to somebody else's node. Could leak your IP. It's uh, not super great for privacy. Um, it's still Monero. It's still got a lot of privacy with it. But if you are in a high threat environment or something like that, you definitely want to be running your own node and you want to be clicking the advanced mode. Go ahead and press next. We're going to go ahead and press create new wallet. And here we go. We can put a wallet name in here. Um, I'm just going to call it a uh, test wallet. Um, then you can choose the location. The default location is your home folder. Um, and then this is very important. The mnemonic seed. The mnemonic seed is basically the key to all your money. Um, there's a lot of people that are, let's say you're having a trouble with your wallet and you're trying to get it to work and you, you, you're you kind of new at this, you don't really know what you're doing, you're, you're asking people how to, how to do certain things. If they tell you that they can help you but you have to give them your mnemonic seed, all they're trying to do is steal your money. So don't do that. You have to Make sure that you write this down on a piece of paper in the physical world. Don't write it down on just like a notepad in your computer. Don't put it on a Word document. That's like really bad. If your computer ever gets compromised or something, they can just 
find those words and steal your money that way as well. The best security practice is to write it down physically on a piece of paper and don't show it to anybody. All right, and uh, the wallet restore height, this is also an important part of Monero. This is basically telling the wallet software where to start looking in the blockchain for your coins. Um, it's not the end of the world if you don't write this number down. You'll just have to scan the entirety of the blockchain to find your coins, um, which can be time consuming. So it's definitely recommended to write that down. But the thing that you absolutely need to keep and you need to keep safe is this mnemonic seed. In fact, if anybody uh, watching this video right now were to use this seed to uh, restore a new wallet, they would have the money inside the wallet if I leave any money in there, right? Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and press next. Now we choose a password here. I'm gonna do a very small password because I'm just doing this as a uh, help video. Um, obviously, longer, more complicated passwords are better and more secure, so I would recommend that. Just make sure you don't forget it. If you do forget it, again, not the end of the world. You just use your mnemonic seed to restore a new wallet. That's the thing that you absolutely need to never forget. All right, we're going to go ahead and press next. Now we're going to go ahead and press create wallet. It's going to ask for your password again. Just type that in. All right, so now we're in the main wallet here. It's connecting to the new node. Uh, it's connecting to the remote node, uh, which is basically just somebody else's copy of the blockchain on somebody else's computer. Um, again, it's not ideal to be doing this, but if you download the blockchain to your computer, it's, I think it's close to 80 gigabytes. Um, there, you can use a pruned version of the blockchain. I think that brings it down to 20 or 30 megabyte. I mean gigabytes. Uh, it's definitely best to do that. But if you're just getting started, you just want to learn how to use Monero. You're just trying to send it to your wallet and get it off of an exchange. I definitely would say that's a little bit more of an advanced thing. But it's not anything you can't learn. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna send some Monero from another wallet that I have to this wallet um, to show you how this works. So this is your primary address. It starts with a four. You can create a new address and this will create a sub address. So all sub addresses in Monero start with an eight. Um, you definitely pr probably want to use a different address every time you withdraw from an exchange. If it's a different exchange or a different person or whatever um, you probably don't want to give the same address out because all these people could collude and figure out that it's you because it's all the same address so it's definitely good to uh, for privacy to uh, change the address up and generate a new address every single time um, so I'm gonna go ahead and send 0 0.05 Monero to myself here so what I'm doing is I'm actually scanning this QR code here and sending from a mobile wallet that I have called Cake Wallet, I definitely recommend it. Um, others are Monerujo, that's a very good one as well. Uh, I don't recommend Free Wallet. Free Wallet is actually a scam. Uh, they steal the money that you send to that wallet, so don't fall for that. Um, there's a few wallets on the Monero subreddit that you can look and see what are trusted and what are untrusted uh, by the Monero community. Um, you can go ahead and look there and there's a few different you could probably find on the Monero website as well So I sent the transaction from my phone. Let's see if it showed up There it is 25 seconds ago. It's showed up 0 0.05 XMR um, Now as you can see here uh, 0 out of 10 confirmations. What does that mean? well a confirmation when you get one confirmation what that means basically is that the Monero that you sent was mined in a block and it was added to the blockchain itself and then when another block is added to the blockchain uh, another confirmation comes in you need to have the transaction block that your transaction came in 
to be mined and then nine blocks after that before you can actually send the money back out of your wallet. This is kind of a security feature of Monero. Again, Monero strives to be as secure and as private as possible. It's a little bit of a usability issue, but if you send yourself a bunch of different transactions and you start using this wallet a lot, this becomes less and less of an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this video until these 10 confirmations come in. Um, Monero block times are about two minutes, uh, give or take, depending on how fast people can find them. Um, so I'll be back in about 20 minutes, give or take. Uh, so I'll see you then. All right, so as we can see here, we now have 11 confirmations. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to send money out of this wallet because I don't want to keep this money in here. You guys saw my seed words. If anybody wants to uh, go ahead and use those seed words and access this wallet, they can totally do that and totally steal this money unless I send it back out. So I'm going to go to the Send tab here. I'm going to go to this. Uh, file that I made earlier with an address that I have. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go ahead and press all and then I'm going to press send. So it's generating the transaction now. Takes just a second. All right so now here you can see it's going to send slightly less than 0 0.05 Monero. That's because of the fee and What's interesting about Monero is that with all the privacy features added in, the fees are still extremely small. Like, that is insane for sending a transaction through cryptocurrency, let alone a private transaction. If you try to do that with Bitcoin, you're going to be spending a lot more. Um, so that's a benefit of Monero. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press confirm. Enter the wallet password again and press send transaction. It's going to take just a second to broadcast this transaction to the Monero network and there we go. Transaction has been successfully sent. Now this is the transaction ID down here. You could paste this into a Monero block explorer and use that to verify the transaction has been sent. It's cool. There's a nice little copy button right there if you need that. Go ahead and press done. Now, I want to show you around the wallet a little bit more and explain a few things. Account. This is something that is a little bit confusing at first. Um, account zero is your primary account. This starts with your primary address and you can generate other addresses within this account. So uh, since we're on this account, you can go ahead and go to transactions and you can see this transaction was received and then sent back out. I showed you guys how to do that. but if I create a new account like I did right here and press on that, uh, these addresses are actually separated from these ones. Um, it's still the same wallet, but they're kind of separated within the wallet software. So if you go to transactions, nothing shows up there because I did not use this account, if that makes sense. So you can go ahead and receive and you can generate new sub addresses within this account and it's all within this account. Uh, so don't get too confused there if you're worried about how it shows zero Monero and you actually do have Monero. It's probably because you are in a different account. Go into settings, show seed and keys. We can press this, uh, put in our wallet password, and this uh, shows our seed. Uh, like I was saying earlier, um, this is the seed that you can use to restore the wallet if you get this to give this seed to anybody and in fact if you are to restore a wallet with this seed you will see those transactions coming in and out if you would like to do that that might be a good little exercise if you're a little confused how that works this shows your uh, wallet restore height um, your primary addresses these are your secret keys um, obviously don't ever use this wallet because I'm showing all of this on a video um, if you do put in these wallet words 
uh, to your wallet, don't use this as your main wallet because this is all going to be public information if this video gets posted anywhere. That's pretty much uh, the Monero wallet. I'm sure that after you use it a few times and get used to sending and receiving transactions, I promise you it's really not that bad. So uh, thank you for watching. Go ahead and share this with anybody who might be interested in using Monero.